Yeah. Can, can you give us a little uh, insight into what it's like to be a UFC fighter and you go over there because you've had a great camp, you all arrive together this time, you're not flying from all over the world, you land in there the biggest week of the, the year for UFC fight week. Um, what was the vibe like when you got there? Yeah, Vegas was, it was good this time. Uh, it was not damn near snowing. <laughs> like the last time I was there in December, you know, it was 40 something degrees walking around. But yeah, it was, it was definitely a different vibe having, you know, all of our coaches, all of our training partners. It was like a constant reminder of the hard work that I'd put in in the months prior because, you know, Alex was still training very hard. Brad Riddell had a fight. Blood Diamond had a fight. So these guys were training at the same time I was training, but they're doing, they're doing our grind sessions. They're doing like hour and a half training, two hour training, just rolling rounds, bikes. So it was a good reminder, whereas usually you go over by yourself and you just do your light pad sessions and there's no constant reminder of all the hard work you did. So it was good having all the boys there, still pushing hard and it was a good reminder and, and very, uh, very motivating. And uh, I watched on the podcast that's on, on demand on Māori TV for anybody that wants to watch. Um, I saw you doing, uh, signing the posters and things like that. Yep. Um, there seemed to be just you and your opponent there and, and an official. Do you get to talk to the guy or do you ignore him? Do you, <laughs> what was that like? For me, like, I'm, I'm relaxed. Like, it depends on the opponent. Some of them choose to be a bit more... Uh, you know, arrogant or something like that. But I'm, I'm from the old school. If someone's gonna be cool with me, I'm gonna be fine with them. You know, it's it's a job at the end of the day, and I appreciate him putting the fight together. Uh, I actually cut weight with Gilbert. We we're sitting in the sauna together, and he kind of, we're both sitting in there for an hour or so, and he looks up to me and he goes, "This is stupid." He's, <laughs> he said, "Why don't we just fight at 77 kilos?" And I said, "I don't know, mate." <laughs> He said, we're both going to weigh the same tomorrow. This is, this is pointless. So it was quite, it was quite good sitting in the, in, and talking to him in the sauna. So it was more like a real uh, a menial chat, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, there's no, yeah, no hard feelings about it. Like, uh, we shook hands afterwards and had a meal together. So it's, like, very, very professional. But that just depends on the opponent you come across. Yeah. Um, now, when, when the fight started, he come out and, well, did he introduce you to that big right hand straight away? Did, and we've just been shown all the highlights where he's knocked people out with that and he caught you with one early. Did, uh, did you have any effect from that? No, nah, like it, it touched, but I was kind of leaning just out of range. Like it didn't land. I seen it and I knew the, the mistake I had made. You know, I made a slight mistake in my positioning. More because he just throws that overhand out of nowhere. You know, he doesn't set it up like a lot of guys in the gym. If you're going to throw like a big power shot, you spend some time to set it up. So it was, yeah, he, he came out very game. But I felt like that led to him getting finished like a lot quicker because of his uh, aggressiveness. And there was time you went to ground and we know how good you are on the ground, but you, you weren't interested on in the ground. Was that... Uh, something that you thought, well, I've got his measure of standing up, or was that a game plan that you had worked on before you got there? Uh, I felt like I had his measure on the feet. I felt like he was uncomfortable in the striking, like he wasn't like, able to relax. But still, when he shot him for a takedown, like I went for a submission, I feel like even if he's Jiu-Jitsu world champion, uh, I feel like I told my coach, maybe I'd get a black belt if I choke him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then the big finale well, you, it was a 50-50 shot because he threw one and two at the same time as you, didn't he? You know, when you, yeah. when you yeah. got him. But he was already concussed. That's <laughs> where I felt like I had the advantage. Uh, you know, I felt like, you know, I was looking in his eyes and I felt like he wasn't really at home. And he commented on that after when I seen him after. After the right hand, he said he doesn't remember anything. He remembers that wake, he remember waking him up after the fight. And I could feel that. I could feel like his, he, his feet weren't planted properly. Like his brain wasn't connecting to his body as well as it should. So that's just something that you can sense in a fighter. So obviously I'm going to take more risk when I feel like my, my opponent is you know, at 30% of their capability. You went to Las Vegas with a special thing to do, and that was to make them take notice of you after you thought you were being 
a wee bit overlooked after the Jim Miller fight. Would that be true? Uh, yeah, like it's just a bit of, you know, you get caught up in the moment. You know, I felt like, you know, fighting that early on the night, like I feel like I wasn't getting so much respect, but it's more like you, you get the blood flowing after a fight. Like I don't plan anything after the fight. It's not like I sit at home and I, you know, some guys plan what they're going to say after the fight. I feel like that takes a lot of the fun out of it. I feel like I just react the way I react and say what I say, and that's, it's more, it's more honest. Like after the gym mollifier, I was very, I was very calm and relaxed because that's the way I felt. Um, after that fight, you know, adrenaline was pumping. I was a bit fired up, so I kind of spoke my mind. So yeah, that's more just I don't plan anything after the fight. I don't plan a speech, and it's just kind of just go with what I'm thinking. Yeah. And the challenge to Dana White has obviously got results because you're now ranked. Um, uh, we, I've seen on the Joe Rogan that Izzy's going to have a holiday or a bit of a layoff. What about you? You were back here in the gym straight away. Yeah, no holiday for me. Like, uh, I'm, I'm as hungry as ever. The next show in Australia is in December, December 2nd, but that's five months away. I ain't waiting that long. I'd like to get one in before then and then the December card as well. So if I can get two more in before the end of the year, uh, I'll push for that and I'll do that. So. No, no rest for me, uh, no holiday for me. But you know, Israel did a five-round training camp, which you have to you have to respect with more rest. Generally, you know, guys take a week off, but you know, with a five-round training camp, that's almost twice as much work. You know, that's not four rounds aspiring. That's that's eight rounds aspiring. That's not you know this five. That's five five-minute rounds of conditioning every week. Like that has to be respected, and you can see that. Like when champions of the UFC fight and they can, that's why it's very difficult to defend a belt because the young hungry guys have been doing three round training camps and then they get their five round shot and they can, they can pick it up. Whereas defending your belt, you're doing a five round, five round, five round. So you get worn out a lot more. So, you know, with his main event time, I feel like he deserves a bit more time off. Oh, well, we hope to get to see you real soon again then, by the sounds of yeah, things. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Have you got any opponent in mind, or have you heard of any? There's a, there's a couple names in the UFC, thrown some names at me, but um, I'm open to anyone. Uh, if, if I could get someone, anyone, you know, I'm not, I'm not fussed if they're ranked. Uh, if they could get me another body in there uh, before the December card, I'm, I'm happy to do that. We'll be happy to watch you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good on you, mate.